Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Maddie Brown. I'm the Senior Assistant Director of Admission here at Gettysburg College. Um, and first and foremost, I want to congratulate uh, those of you admitted to Gettysburg's class of 2025. Congratulations. We look forward to welcoming you to campus uh, this fall. Um, and tonight, we are in some great company. So we have um, a professor, we have two current students from our psychology department here at Gettysburg College. So we're hoping that you will learn a little bit more and have plenty of questions for these three wonderful individuals. Um, I do want to make note um, that we will use the Q&A feature. Uh, so please put your questions there whenever you have them and we'll get to them toward the end. And we are also recording this session for possible future use. So thanks again for joining. And without further ado, I will hand it over to Dan. All right, thank you, Maddie. And welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. And it's, I don't know where you are, but here it's a beautiful sunny day. So thank you for taking some time to come join us and hear about the psychology department. Um, my name is Dan McCall. I'm the chair of the department. Um, and what I'd like to do today is um, just give you an overview of what our department experience is like. And so what, what students in our major do. Um, I also will show you some pictures of what it looks like here. And I know this is, um, you know, I feel terrible that people can't be here to, to walk around our building and see our classrooms and meet all of our faculty. And I think, but I think this is the, the a good alternative to that. Um, so what I, my goal in sort of setting up this presentation is just to get you to, to see what it's like here. So I've included you know, more pictures than I usually do in this sort of presentation when people are on campus. Um, and, and the students will talk a little bit about their experience just to give you an idea of what it's like to be a student in the psychology department at Gettysburg. Um, feel free to ask questions um, in the Q&A. You can ask them as we go along. I, I, I will work through the presentation. I'm going to um, do my thing and then we'll ask the students to speak for a few minutes and then we'll deal with questions afterward. But if you have questions as we're going through, feel free to type them. You don't have to wait to submit them until we're done. Uh, but we probably won't address the, your questions until the very end of the presentation. Um, so the, the psychology department at Gettysburg, we are one of the larger majors on campus. Um, we have currently have 13 full-time faculty, and we also have a couple of sort of continuing part-time faculty that have been here for a long time with us and teach, teach a couple of our classes. Um, we graduate on average 50 to 60 majors per year, and that kind of fluctuates. Right now, I think our junior class has almost 70 in it. Um, so that tends to be the, the number that we have. We are, if you've been on campus before, we are located near the Science Center. We are adjoining the Science Center here. And my picture down on the bottom left in the, in the distance, you can see the Science Center. Mercury is attached to the front of that. Um, we are on the third floor of that building. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the, the emphasis in our major. The, the way we um, have structured the psychology major is to emphasize psychological science. Um, we teach, you know, all the, the standard courses that you would find in a, in a department of psychology, courses in cognitive and personality and, and developmental psychology um, and clinical psychology and counseling psychology. So we cover the whole, try to cover as much of the breadth of the discipline of psychology as we can. Um, but in all of our courses, our emphasis is on teaching psychology as a science. Um, and we think that's one of the strengths of our program is the, the emphasis on, on research that students get across the curriculum um, and most especially at the capstone level toward the end of the, the career, their career here. And I'll, I will talk to you about the, the way our major is structured and how students experience um, the, their exposure to psychology as a science as we work our way through. Um, of course, as a small liberal arts college, we emphasize teaching and mentoring. And I think one of the things that's um, interesting about the psychology department is that for all of us, all of our faculty are engaged in research ourselves. Um, and because we're a small liberal arts school, we're not a large university, we don't have graduate students here that collaborate with us on our research. And so undergraduate students do all of the work with us that a graduate student would at a big university. So they, they work with us in our labs, they collaborate with us on publications and research presentations. Um, and, and, and that's not just um, 
the few students that might work as research assistants paid in our labs, but also it happens across the curriculum. Um, we start exposure to research early on, and then our capstone courses, all students design and conduct their own research. Um, and so we have a very strong emphasis, we believe, on student faculty collaboration in and out of the classroom. The, um, as I said, all of the faculty in the psych department have our own research areas, and this is just a list of some of the general areas that we all um, work on. We have social psychologists that work on aggression and bullying and mindfulness. We have a clinical psychologist that studies uh, mental health and personality. Um, we have an animal behavior neuroscientist that studies rat behavior and the neuroscience of play. Cognitive psychologists do embodied cognition. Perceptual psychologists, um, Professor Russell in our department does face perception work. Um, culture, social justice, and so on and so on. Um, I put my area last. My own particular research area is on odor and flavor perception. I do work on smell and taste and flavor and food perception. Um, and I work with adults and kids, um, usually sort of preschool through school age kids um, in, in that domain. Um, some of the facilities that we have here, all of us have our own dedicated research spaces and the students work in those spaces, um, not just in our labs, but also as part of our part of the curriculum. So students that are in our capstone courses in psychology will do research, um, usually in our lab spaces. Um, and so we have facilities for social psychology research and perception and development and so on. Um, the, we also have on campus a, a daycare center uh, that our students uh, spend time in in a few different courses. So in the uh, introductory level developmental psychology courses, our students will volunteer during a normal non-COVID year. Our students would volunteer in the uh, in this, the Gettysburg's Growing Place Daycare Center and conduct observations of children. And then in the advanced courses where they're doing research, they will conduct research with kids and preschoolers in, in that uh, daycare centers. And that is right across the street from the psychology department. So we're very happy about that. Uh, the classroom spaces, I don't know if you've been had a chance to come on campus, but I wanted to just put some pictures in here of the classroom spaces. Um, these are the pre-COVID configurations of those classrooms. So some of them are designed as seminar spaces for talking in small groups. Uh, we have a computer lab in our department and in the building next door, we have uh, a bunch of different computer labs that we use for our statistics courses and our advanced laboratory courses for students to do their research on. Um, I put in here too that the, the class sizes in the psychology department range from 12 to 30. So you, the, the largest class you would ever have is a class of 30 in Psych 101 or some of the introductory level disciplinary courses like social psychology and personality psychology. Um, and as you work your way up in the major, the classes get smaller. So the, the capstone courses are 12, capped at 12. And they're often smaller than that. So um, we're in the middle right now doing enrollments for next year. And some of those classes are going to be um, six and seven, and some will be up to 12. So that, that, that's the range of class sizes that we have. Um, we like that about our courses because what it means is that we get to know our students um, and we, we can keep track of them and we can work with them closely and we can mentor them. Um, we, we form relationships with our students. We see them in multiple classes often um, over the course of their time here. And then they end up working with us in our research and so on. So, so that's one of the things that I like best personally about teaching at a place like Gettysburg. Um, here is briefly the structure of the psych major. The major requirements are 10 courses. Uh, we start with Psych 101 and I just put a note on here if you're currently doing AP psychology, um, if you get a four or a five on the AP exam, we accept that as the equivalent of Psych 101. Um, so if you, if you have that, then you can jump right in in the fall doing uh, the 200 level elective courses. Um, otherwise, you could do Psych 101 in the fall. We have tons of sections of that course um, for the fall, and we reserve lots and lots of spaces for first year students. The, um, after Psych 101, you can take the elective courses on the left side here, and these are in the, all the sub-disciplines of psychology, and we all teach those in our own disciplinary area. So I would teach one in perception. Um, if someone's a developmental psychologist, of course, they're going to teach the developmental courses and so on. Um, once you're declared as a psychology major, you can take the introductory statistics course. That usually happens um, early sophomore year is when student, most students take that. Some students take that in the spring of their freshman year also. Um, so the, and that's just an overview of statistics. That's fairly typical of most 
um, psychology programs, undergraduate psychology programs, there'd be a statistics course. Once you get through that course, you take the experimental research methods course. That's a more advanced statistics course where you're designing and conducting some research and learning about um, the American Psychological Association rules for designing research and writing research, and you get a lot more experience with that. And then once you get through those courses, then you move on to the capstone. And those are usually uh, late junior into senior year. Um, and this is the in, in these courses, these capstone courses, students take two of them. They are narrowly focused in uh, specific research areas. And they they relate to, I put this dashed arrow here because they all, all of the capstone courses have prerequisites back here at the 200 level. Um, so you could do, for instance, a, a a 200 level course in perception, and then you could do in your senior year a laboratory course in perception. Um, that's one that I teach from time to time. And the, the laboratory, laboratory course when I teach it is in my research area. So we focus on smell and flavor and food perception and things like that. Um, and and the, that's true of all of those courses. So you, if you've looked at our curriculum before, you've seen that the titles of those courses are all very generic, but they are much more narrowly focused than that suggests. So the social psychology advanced lab course, uh, if it was taken with Professor Barlett, who's an expert in, in aggression and bullying, that would be the research that you would be reading in there. So in those courses, the students read original research in psychology and they design and conduct their own research um, and students take two of those and we require some breadth in the major. So one of those courses will be in more of the natural science side of psychology. So in things like perception and, and brain and neuroscience or cognition. And another one of those courses will be in more of the social science side of psychology. So you'll take one in either perception or person no, perception, personality or social psychology or clinical psychology in those domains. Um, and then finally, the last course out of the 10 is the History of Psychological Science course. And that's one that we put toward the end of the, the career. So the students take that usually in late junior again or senior year. Um, and that one, the purpose of that course is to kind of step back now that we've done all this research over four years in psychology, let's step back and look at how does psychology fit in among all of the other sciences as a discipline? How does it fit into, you know, where did it come from in, its first, in the first place, but how does it stand alone as a science and what makes it unique and so on? So we want students to have lots of experience in psychology before we tackle that course so that they have some perspective and can step back and think about the larger issues about psychology. Um, the last little bit on this slide is at the bottom here and note that um, psychology majors also do two laboratory courses in the natural sciences. The Gettysburg College curriculum, the broader curriculum, requires students to do two natural science courses. Um, and the, for all Gettysburg students, one of them has to have a laboratory and the other one does not. But for psychology majors, we want you to get a little bit more exposure to the natural sciences. So for, um, we require our majors to have both of those natural science courses to be bio, to be laboratory courses. They can be biology, chemistry, physics, astronomy. They can be in any discipline in the natural sciences, but they need to have laboratories. So those are the, that's just a quick overview of what the, the courses are. And if you have questions, we can talk more about what happens in these specific courses later on. Um, and as I said earlier, the, one of the hallmarks of our program is that students get actively engaged in research. And there are a bunch of different ways that students get involved in research. Um, certainly every student that comes through our curriculum is going to be doing research. Uh, they will be conducting their own original research. And that, that happens most in those capstone courses toward the end of their experience here. So you have two separate capstones where you're designing research, often two studies in the course of that semester. Um, so we get a lot, we give students a lot of experience designing and conducting research. And the reason we think this is important is because psychology is a research science. Um, and in, no matter where students intend to go with their psychology majors, whether you're going into you know, a PhD program to study experimental psychology or a master's in counseling program or a PhD in counseling or clinical psychology, um, or even if you're going into the industry, we have students that go into marketing degrees and things like marketing programs and things. Um, we find that having a broad exposure to research and psychology allows them to think more effectively as psychologists. It helps students get into graduate schools in counseling and clinical programs, even where they're not going to be doing research. It helps them get jobs. And when we hear from our students coming back um, for homecomings and things and writing back notes to us, um, 
they, they come to appreciate, even the students that are in, you know, marketing business degrees, they say, well, my employees were so impressed with the fact that I did independent research as, a, as an undergraduate um, that it, I believe it helped me get this job. So, so this is why we, we embrace this idea of all students conducting research as the, in the psych major. Um, and so in addition to the courses, though, we all have research assistants working with us in our labs, so 30 to 40 students per year, roughly. Um, we, they can work as research assistants for pay or for, we have a credit system where students can do it as a quarter credit uh, research internship to work with us in the labs. Um, and then we also offer independent studies. Student, if a student has an interesting idea that they want to pursue um, in a research study, you could approach a faculty member um, and you can sign up for an independent study project where you can get a, a graded credit, it counts as a course, to do your own independent research. Most of those, I will say, happen, if students do those, happen toward the end of their time here. So after you've had lots of exposure to research and then you give them an idea of what you want to study, they don't have to be toward the end of the, your time. They could happen earlier as well. Um, and so in other ways that students serve in, in, in participate in research, all students will at some point in their time here be, be participants in research studies. Our Psych 101 students, one of the requirements is that they actually go and participate as a subject in, in psychological research, just to get a sense from that perspective of what it's like, what science is like. Um, our research assistants who work with us in our labs, they help us design our experiments. As I said earlier, we don't have graduate students here. so. And, and we need help with research. So the students that work with us do all the things that a graduate student would do at a large university. They design, they're there from the beginning, designing the studies and testing the participants and coding and analyzing the data. Um, they come with us to national conferences and present their findings with us. Um, this has been, it's been a rough year because we, there have not been a lot of national conferences going on this year. And um, we will hope that this all picks up next year. We have uh, dedicated, funding that has been given to us by donors over the years. We have a couple of different research um, money pools, basically, that allows students to do, helps pay for things like conference travel, to allow them to come with us to conferences, that helps pay for um, research projects. So there, there are funds the students can apply for to um, get money to run research studies. Um, and so the students do ordinarily in a normal year will come with us to national conferences and present their studies. And then they also appear as co-authors on our publications. And this is just some papers that have come out over the last, I don't know, five, 10 years with um, students on them as co-authors. And I've lost my button, there it is. Um, and then finally, I just a, a few additional opportunities that come up outside of classes. As I said, students can work as research assistants in our labs for credit or for pay. Um, we also have internships available that students can um, sign up for internships that you can get a credit, a, great, a, a class credit that counts towards your 32 for graduation at Gettysburg um, for doing an internship. Most of our students that do internships will do them over the summers. Um, and usually they're ha they happen in places near your home. So, so in, if you're between sophomore and junior year or between junior and senior year and you want to get some internship experience, um, we accept a wide range of activities as internships as long as they're related to psychology. We have a coordinator in the department who, who oversees the internships and helps students select and sign up and pick ones that are appropriate and so on. We keep records of where students have done internships in the past and we have a big book in here where students can flip through and find inter internship ideas. We do recommend internships for students who have uh, who are interested in clinical and counseling psychology because it's a way to get some additional counseling experience before they apply to graduate schools. We have a neuroscience minor at Gettysburg. Um, I don't oversee that. That's a kind of a separate program. That's a joint program between psychology and biology. Um, so it's a, a minor that students can take, whether they're biology, philosophy majors or, or psychology majors, and there are different ways to satisfy the requirements for that. Um, students sometimes work as teaching assistantships, assistants for our courses. So in courses like our statistics courses, for instance, um, we have students who have done well in those courses will come back and work for us um, it, as overseeing as assistants in that class where they do things like they run, might run review sessions and help students with um, uh, homework and so on. We do have a National Honor Society. We have a chapter of the Psychi National Honor Society. And then a note here, uh, I don't want to say too much about this because there's information on our website about these, but we do have some summer programs that allow students to do research over the summer. Um, the XSIG program is a, a program that's broad that covers all of the STEM fields. 
Um, so all of the science students, including psychology, can participate in, this, in the XSIG summer program. The SHAN summer program is one that's unique to psychology. We have our own uh, funding source for that that allows us to bring students uh, in over the summer to do some research. And there's a camp psych. I don't know if any of you have participated in camp psych. This is a thing that happens over the summer. We bring in um, students who are mostly seniors in high school ju or juniors in high school. And there's a um, pretty successful camp that one of our faculty has been running over the last 10 or 15 years um, as a summer program. And some of our students work at that camp as well. Um, so let me stop talking and I'll turn it over to the students. I want you to hear about, uh, um, ask them to say a few words about their own experience here. And we're gonna start with, uh, both of these students are seniors. They're graduating this semester. And they both had slightly different experiences in the major. So let's start with uh, Sydney. I'll let you take it over. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for coming and congratulations on getting into Gettysburg. Um, like Professor McCall said, I am a senior. I am a double major, actually. So I'm a psychology and religious studies double major. Um, I also have a double minor as well that I happened upon. Um, I'm not that much of a of a try hard, but um, it is the peace and justice studies minor and the Middle Eastern Islamic studies minor as well. Um, so that has given me a really good overarching liberal arts kind of perspective when looking into psychology, which I found really helpful in my education. Um, I'm from Rockland County, New York as well, which is about four hours from Gettysburg. So like Professor McCall had said, there are a lot of opportunities in the psych department um, that I have had the opportunity to participate in and have the privilege to be a part of. So I took a child development course where I was able to go to the growing place, um, which was one of my favorite experiences at Gettysburg. And I was able to connect with faculty's children and local community members' children um, in doing some observations at the preschool there, um, which is a great way to get off campus and interact with children, which I really enjoy. Um, I also have done research in my capstones and in that introductory statistics course. So even though I'm not done research independently with a professor, I was able to get some experience in that as well, which was really helpful to me in applying for graduate schools. Um, I was a teacher's assistant for our statistics course. The one, um, we have two statistics, statistics courses that you take. I was the peer learning associate for the second one, um, working with Professor Fincher Keeper, which was a really spectacular experience for me as well, and also helped me a lot when applying for graduate programs. Um, I am currently in a child development capstone, and I am doing independent research looking at princess media, Disney princess media, and how that affects young children's um, perceptions of princesses in regards to race. So oftentimes the princesses that we see obviously are mostly white European looking and we want to examine if these new multicultural princesses like Moana and Tiana are making a difference in children's perceptions of beauty and princesses. Um, so that's something that has interested me a lot and I've really appreciated being able to go in the direction that I choose with that research within the capstone. Um, next year, I will be attending Vanderbilt University, um, Peabody College. I'm going to a counseling program there, um, a master's of science in counseling. It will be about a three-year program where I'm doing a dual track in school counseling and clinical mental health counseling. And after that, I hope to work with indigenous youth in um, helping some of the counseling resources there and, and doing culturally appropriate counseling for the youth there um, if that community would want me and have me. Um, I have really enjoyed getting to know the faculty in the psych department. Um, a lot of them wrote my recommendations for graduate school and I had three different professors, one that I had never even met before, Zooming with me during the pandemic, trying to figure out what kind of graduate program I wanted to apply to, if I even wanted to apply to one. So I really appreciated the support that I got, um, even though it was over the summer in the pandemic, um, a professor, one I had never met and two that I've been in close contact with. So I really appreciated that support um, and sharing their personal experiences with me. Um, I also recently have just Zoomed with an alumni that's in a school psychology program. So the alumni network that we get to connect with after being a psych maker, major at Gettysburg and while being one right now has been really helpful for me to see what other perspectives or experiences I may wanna pursue after Gettysburg as well. 
Um, so it's a really great psych department. And now I'm going to pass it along to May. Um, we're in a class together right now as well. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm so excited to speak with you. I'm Mae Lonergan, um, I'm a senior. Um, I'm from Bethesda, Maryland, so that's about um, an hour and a half away. And I'm a psychology major with a minor in education and another minor in creative writing. Um, basically, I chose Gettysburg just um, going to one of these um, meetings, hearing about how the faculty and the students are so close and they do these different type of research opportunities together and they're so supportive of one another and they're both so passionate about what they do so i'm really happy to be here explaining why i love the department um i'm in a bunch of different um research projects currently um i have served as a research assistant in dr barlett's aggression lab um for a little over a year now I'm doing honors research with, uh, with Professor Meyer and he mostly focuses on mindfulness. So I'm combining the, his mindfulness um, ideology with um, an actually professor who was visiting and worked with, um, with Professor Russell. He actually is in Wales and he is a collaborator with us and he focuses on attraction and I'm combining mindfulness and attraction, trying to see if that my, if mindful people are as influenced by the by the halo effect than less mindful people also when we are talking about capstones uh sorry when we were talking about capstones i did a capstone with um professor wilson on um sorry i'm blanking i'm my covid speaking skills has really drained me i'm sure you all understand um, basically, I did a project on COVID-19 and how people perceive COVID information about COVID-19 based off of their political affiliation and the quality of the information given. And this semester, that was last semester, this semester, I actually am doing that as actual research with him, with my partner who is in the class, and we are collaborating on an actual project currently. So I'm working on three different projects and I'm so thankful to have those opportunities. Um, I also really enjoy the liberal arts education because they offer something called a course cluster where you take two different subjects and combine them that are from two different fields and show the connection you make with your liberal arts education. So I chose um, psychology and photography very different. I'm a photographer for the school. So I'm very passionate about it. And I chose to photograph people on campus and have them talk about how they view conformity and um, what they think conformity is. And I have them wear, I had them wear an outfit that they feel comfortable wearing around campus versus outfits they feel kind of fit in with the culture of the community. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. And I got to meet new people. I had friends doing it, and it was just something that I really enjoyed doing. So that was a little fun thing I did. Um, basically, just like how Sid, what Sydney said, I've talked a lot with the faculty. They have a very open door policy. I've gotten help with my writing, my statistical skills, life problems. They're always there to help. Um, when thinking about graduate programs, um, I got a lot of help with that. I actually also received some help when trying to figure out some law school pr um, programs because psychology is useful for any field. Um, so I will be attending law school in the fall. I'm still deciding where exactly I'm going to go because I have a few options, thankfully, because of my resume. Um, but I'm just really thankful for the psych department and everything that they've done for me. I I just w could rave about it all day. I, the faculty and students, it's such a tight knit community where everyone's supporting one another. And I'm just so thankful. I do not want to leave this school. And I bet if you do come, you'll feel the exact same way. So if you have any questions, feel free to put one in the chat. <laughs> oh, thank you both. That was very nice. And you know, I didn't, I, I didn't screen the two of them. I told them they can say whatever they want. So that was, it's very nice to hear very nice things about our department. Um, I, I got to say too that this year I've been so impressed with how our students have been handling um, the, just the challenges that everyone's been going through. It, it's been, you know, psychology has like like a lot of the sciences 
uh, COVID has been a challenge for us because we are a lab science, right? I and mean, a lot of our research depends on people coming to the lab. And especially in the case of psychology, we're a human science. So we, most of our research depends on people actual bringing people into our lab and interacting with them. And we haven't been able to do that in a lot of cases. We certainly couldn't do it in the fall. Um, and so we have all been adapting over the course of the year. Those of us that teach the upper level research courses have come up with online kinds of experiments that students have been able to do or survey based research. And so fortunately, we've been able to maintain our standards and how students conduct those kinds of research projects. Um, the, my wife is Professor Goubet and teaches in the department. She does a course in developmental psychology and uh, she and Professor Kane, who also teach the development course, um, came up with a system to recruit students to recruit kids to participate in research. So they reached out to the local schools who sent letters to parents and lined up um, young children to participate in research. And so they agreed to, to do this. And so they, they all designed Zoom based research projects so that the students could interact with the kids over Zoom and conduct their, um, their research projects that way. Um, so it's been an interesting year. We've had a lot of adaptations and I think everybody has been um, rising to the challenge in a pretty admirable way. Um, the other thing that I think Sydney and May talk about that I want to highlight is both of them talk about multiple majors and multiple minors and all these other things. And I, I think one of the things about the psychology major is that it is fairly adaptable um, to doing multiple majors and minors. Um, it, you, you can't start too late. Like if someone starts the psychology major in their junior year, well, then they probably don't have time to do a second major. Um, but if you come in and you're starting in your first year taking some psych courses and getting ready, um, there is plenty of time to work in a second major if people want to do that. It's something that says you need to do a second major, but a lot of our students do um, do multiple minors in some cases, um, a semester abroad. Uh, uh, many of our students do spend a semester abroad, usually in the junior year, and that, so it's possible to work that into the program and still um, complete the psychology major with plenty of room to spare. Um, let me just, before we tur turn to questions in the Q&A, and you can feel free to write questions in the Q&A if there's something that you want to hear more about, uh, just a little bit about what our majors have done after graduation. So psychology is a very broadly useful degree. Um, our students have certainly gone on to become psychologists, but we see our students going to be teachers in uh, law school. Um, as May said, she'll be going to law school. We have students go to medical school. Um, medical school would need pre-med requirements in addition to a psych major, but I, I had a student a couple of years ago that was doing pre-med and psychology and is now a medical student, um, so it's, it happens. Students that are financial consultants and marketing, so students go into those disciplines. It's, it's kind of funny because sometimes you, you, know, you encounter those students later on that are working in financial consulting or marketing and they say, oh, I'm, they kind of feel bad, I'm not using my psychology major. And then we tell them like, yes, you are, you know, you, every, everything requires psychology, any discipline that requires you interacting with people and, and, and dealing with human behavior is going to make use of your psychology major. Um, so we do see quite a few students go into those kinds of um, disciplines. And then just to give you some statistics, this is a rough percentage. This is based on the last uh, evaluation that we did to the psych department a couple of years ago. Um, and at that point, we the ones that we could track down, 50% of our uh, graduates go on to pursue graduate degrees um, in all kinds of different areas. The rest will go straight into the workforce. Some of them work for a few years and then go into grad school after that to, to continue studying psychology. Um, and then of the ones that go to graduate school, these are the kinds of disciplines that they go into. So we do, you know, if you look at the sort of applied and counseling and clinical side, most of them will end up in those disciplines. And then some go into straight experimental psychology programs and, and people in these programs would end up working at universities and things after that. And, and just this is just a rough list of some of the places that our students have gone to over the last couple of years. So I can stop there and answer questions. I'll end with a couple of quotes. These are things that we like to hear from our students. This is uh, people that have written us um, after they've been out for a little bit and gone into graduate programs, these are the kinds of things they've said, which we are always happy to hear. Um, so I will stop there. And if anybody has any questions, please let us know. Thank you. Um, I, I don't see that we have any more questions in the Q&A, um, but since there's a little time left with you all, um, 
I was wondering if Sydney or May got a chance to study abroad um, as, as a psychology major and would be able to speak a little more about that. Sure. Um, I just studied abroad in the spring and I went to Indonesia. Um, I was luckily able to stay there for a solid two months. My program was about three and a half months long. So um, it was an SIT program, which means that the bulk of our lectures and traveling around Indonesia happened in those first two months. So luckily I was able to experience um, that full experience. But um, I was able to study abroad with the major. Um, I was not on the tra normal trajectory that you have within the psych department that Dr. McCall explained earlier, but I still very easily fit it into my schedule, even with the double major and double minor. Um, it's very doable. And I worked with Professor Russell, my advisor from when I was a freshman to help help me figure that out, um, even though I did not take a psychology course my first semester um, at Gettysburg. So it's very doable to go abroad with the psychology major. Um, I did not do any psych courses when I was abroad. I wanted to take an SIT program, which is more community-based um, in a homestay instead of doing a college type experience. But I know a lot of people that have taken psychology courses abroad and that has been really helpful for them. Um, but I wanna emphasize how I do appreciate that I was able to do small scale research within my courses because I went abroad and too late in my college career realized that I may have wanted to do a, a year long research project, but I was still able to get those pieces of research that helped me both know what I wanted to do with my career, have some experience in that and help me get into graduate school. So um, it's very doable to go abroad as a psychology major. Most of us do go abroad. Um, I went abroad to Australia in the fall of 2019. So, and I've, would strongly recommend it. Um, I did not take any psychology courses, but I actually took um, for my writing minor an English course, but it was a capstone style where the professor said, pick a problem in the world and try to solve it, which is kind of unique for a English course. Um, and I chose domestic violence, which I'm very passionate about. And I was able to use um, some of my psych background actually to uh, lead my little group that I had in some psychology research, just going through um, journal articles. They hadn't done that because obviously they're English majors, but our goal was to create um, create a, a, like a teaching guide for a, a high school teacher to explain what teenage domestic violence looks like, how often it occurs, how to combat it. And then we also went through literature where it was kind of romanticized. Um, it was just interesting combining my psycho psychology background with the English side of things. Also, I'm an education minor. So kind of bringing that into a, a school atmosphere was very interesting. Just kind of thinking about how you can bring it into the school because a lot of our capstones or and all of our ca classes, normally when we bring up these problems with psychology, we'd normally also address what are some ways we can use the psychology to kind of to combat these issues. And I also really liked my experience because I came back from abroad and immediately started working in Dr. Barlett's aggression lab. And we've worked a lot on all different types of aggression. And recently we actually just submitted an article for potential publication on the domestic violence rates during COVID-19 and why they may occur and how to maybe combat that. So I really enjoyed my Australia experience, but again, it still connects with psychology. All right, thank you both. We do have a couple of questions in the chat that I think are of general interest. The, so the first question was, have there been students go on to forensic psychology graduate programs? And yes, we have. I mean, it's, it's not the most common, but if uh, they do appear in this column here. So we have, you know, of the 25% that go on to uh, experimental graduate programs, some of them have gone on to forensic programs. Um, we don't have forensic psychology here, unfortunately. I think it's fascinating. I kind of wish we, we did. But the students that have been interested in that, um, there are courses in pre-law here. And so we would recommend that students do a psychology major with some pre-law exposure courses. Um, 
and probably some biology. Um, so emphasis in biology and physiology and things would be a combination. Um, we do have a, a program here on campus, an individualized major program where students can design their own majors. And so I know one student uh, a few years ago that did design a forensic psychology major that included a lot of the core courses in psychology but then uh, uh, included some of the pre-law courses as well and some of the science courses. Uh, th that wouldn't be necessary to get into a forensic program. I think the psychology major is plenty because what you what a forensic graduate program is gonna look for is lots of research experience and a, a facility with conducting research, um, lots of experience in that domain, um, solid academic performance, in in the courses that would be important for forensic psychology they're not forensic psychology programs are not expecting students to come in trained in forensic psychology so they would be looking for someone with a good grounding in psychology and, and we think that's what we, we do here um so yes the short answer is there have been some and the second question is is our degree a bachelor of science or a bachelor of arts and our degree is a bachelor of arts degree in psychology um, we have been having conversations about that lately, about whether we want to change that or not, because the way that we've structured the major really is closer to a Bachelor of Science degree. Um, the fact that students take, um, you know, of the 10 courses they take with in the major, four of them have laboratory components. One, two, three, four, have it. Yes, four of them have laboratory components. And then we also require students to take two natural science courses that have laboratories. Um, so the students get a lot of science exposure. And we do think it's probably more appropriate to be t a Bachelor of Science degree. But for now, it's a Bachelor of Arts degree um, that we offer. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, well, I want to thank the, the panelists. This has been fantastic. May and Sydney, so thorough. You really had a Gettysburg experience. So fantastic choices, Dan. And, and your presentation with all those pictures was really truly comprehensive if someone can not get to our facilities. Um, I will remind everyone that this month we are open for in-person campus tours um, and there are limited buildings that, that we can get you into. Uh, but so many virtual programs that you can attend in the next few weeks as you make your final decision. So I just want to say congratulations one more time to those of you um, that will hopefully be joining our community this fall. And thanks for tuning in.